Uh, but uh, Borrelia does form cysts. And um, with apologies um, to uh, Dr. Balsic, uh, uh, gemi is another word for cyst, although I think that there are some fine points that make gemi more special than the average cyst. Um, anyway, this is the uh, path for transition to a cystic form. From the spiral form, it rounds up, and uh, here's another form where you can see it's all coiled up inside with a little tail coming out. Often cystic borrelia have tail structures that come out uh, and stick out like a, a wagging tail of a dog. Uh, these form when the borrelia is in unfavorable conditions. Unfavorable means spinal fluid. It means if you dump them in water. It means if you torture them with acid. It means if they don't have the right nutrients. If you add to them R RPMI, which is a tissue culture medium, it doesn't have all of the juiced up things that BESK has, it will form 100% cysts. And then if you add them to BSK, which is the Borrelia BSKH, which is the Borrelia culture medium, within 30 seconds or less, the Borrelia that look like, oh, th wait a minute, uh, that look like the uh, Borrelia up here will revert to a spiral form and a modal form. So they can very quickly, uh, fast on their feet, convert from uh, cystic to spiral. Now, one of the other things they can do, oh, here's a cyst with uh, granules inside. And uh, where did the granules come from? Well, one of the other things that Borrelia do in unfavorable conditions is they segment like sausages and they become granular chains like a pearl necklace. And not all the granules are the equal size. Some of them are actually kind of rectangular, some small, some large. And uh, these all contain DNA, and each of the granules contains the complete complement needed to make infinite numbers of Borrelia. It has one chromosome, it has uh, 20 uh, plasmids or whatever the Borrelia usually has, and each of these uh, granular units or these granular units is enough to make the spirochete.